to bring out our next few honorees, Mr. Dick D. Z. So a minute ago I was saying Coney Island USA is a 36-year-old not-for-profit arts organization. It is. It's a 501c3 charity. It really is. Uh, we just got a permanent <laughs> charter for our museum after 36 years. We know I'm cool. But if I draw your attention back to the mission to defend the honor, it sounds a little defensive, doesn't it? Um, 36 years ago, there were no universities, there were no universities, uh, art institutions, museums, taking this um, art form, this lowbrow art form, seriously. And it was a bit defensive. We did have to behave like superheroes and defend burlesque and defend sideshows and defend tattoos as legitimate art forms. And we like to think we did it um, with serious intent and uh, with good taste, if there is such a thing as good taste in the lowbrow. Um, but 36 years later, we don't have to be so defensive. In fact, um, it's come to a point in the 21st century where the highbrow has decided the lowbrow is cool. And that's a remarkable change for us, and we're thrilled by it, and we're encouraged by it, that major institutions now are bringing Coney Islands into their doors without us having to storm the doors. So in honor of this, um, we're astonished this year that among the highbrow, there is a major movement only because of very hard work for several years now by two women we would like to honor tonight. Um, Robin Jaffe Frank is a PhD Coney curator at the United States oldest art museum in Hartford, Connecticut, the Wadsworth Athenaeum. Um, Dennis, I'm sorry, is even older than the Polar Bear Club. <laughs> and thanks to um, Robin's hard work, um, she has put together a remarkable exhibit that's beginning in Hartford, that will come to the Brooklyn Museum, that will tour the United States of America for two years. Uh, there's a remarkable catalog you all should own. If you could come up to the stage, but if that's not enough in my home state of Connecticut, um, when Hartford jumped in, of course, Yale, being even more highbrow, had to say, well, we're in on this, too. Um, so we have two women of the year from Connecticut. Um, Lisa um, Koreski um, is the county curator at the Yale School of Art, and we'd like both of you to come up on stage and get the figure. Poets 
have taken Coney Island as their subject for setting in an extraordinary array of works of art. If you come to the Wadsworth Athenaeum, which has been open since 1842, <laughs> you will be in a time capsule going back in time and seeing how Coney Island has captured the imagination through its magnetic allure. And you will be astounded, as I have been, by the artists who have created visions of wonder and menace, hope and despair, dreams and nightmares that are a prism with which to view the American experience. And they have taken as their setting Coney Island because Coney Island has been the place to visualize the future, the place to experience the mixing of people from different races, classes, ethnicities, a place that transcends um, social boundaries, and a place that for many of us, in our hearts, will always be home. Um, Dennis, is Dennis still here? Yeah. Um, Yale's been around longer than Hartford. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, New Haven Colony did proceed. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, but I started the show there. <laughs> so, um, I've been joking with Robin after getting this wonderful email about this honor that I was her parasitic twin. Um, because, because I've known, I've known about her show. I've known about her show for years, and I've been working on my own for just a few years. And I was so inspired by her, and so inspired by this place, and all of the incredible art and artists that have made pilgrimages out here um, over centuries. You know, since 18. 29. Since we're talking about history today. Um, and, and so I wanted to create a literal side show to Robin's show um, at the Yale School of Art where I teach photography and bring the, the freak show back to Yale um, and to teach the students about this other world out there that they had never experienced. I can't tell you how many times I ask my students if they've ever been to Coney Island, and none of them have. And I say, get yourself out there immediately. Get out there this summer. <laughs> go somewhere that seemed like it was the end of the world where everybody's accepted, everybody's okay. Um, the extraordinary is um, is there for you to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my words. <laughs> but, but, um, You're awesome. So and to get this awesome plaque. I actually had just mentioned to Marie tonight how much I loved her uh, pointing finger banners <laughs> and how she should really make a bunch of them because they'll sell like hotcakes. So anyway, like, Hot but um, I'm so honored because, you know, as a young photographer coming out here, um, you know, there's so many instances where it's like no photos, no pictures, and um, finally, to be able to stand on this stage and where, where Matt first stopped on this stage um, is just such an incredible honor, you have no idea. Um, so I want to thank Dick, I want to thank Marie, I want to thank Robin, um, and everyone out here. 
Um, unfortunately, Sideshow closed exactly one week ago. Oh, yeah. um, but if you go to art.yale.edu, we have installation shots, and you can see work by Marie, by uh, Matt Fraser, the great Fredini, and then many others that are part of this big Coney Island family. <laughs> event. <laughs>